All right, welcome to the DFS Build NBA Edition, Saturday edition too. Not many weekend shows we do, but here we are on Saturday looking at this seven-game slate for DraftKings. I'm Kevin Roberts, joined with Taylor Smith. We're going to go game by game, highlighting the top plays to help you build your lineups. Do us a favor and like this video below if we help you out in any way. And if you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted for said videos. Uh, this video is sponsored by DFS Hero, which has a versatile lineup optimizer and plenty of features that can help you score a takedown. Right now, you can actually get 15% off of your first sign up there by using our link below in the video description. So please go ahead and take advantage of that. We'll also be using the DFS Hero optimizer for this show. So seven games, we're not gonna try to take too long. Let's dive right into it. How are you doing, Taylor? I'm doing well, Kevin Roberts. Yeah, it's so, funny. it's so funny you even ask that because just because we're on air like, as if we hadn't been talking for the last 10, 15 And like years. no one else cares. Like people are watching this <laughs> after the fact. Like by the time they watch, I could be dead. No one knows. <laughs> it's true. That's how time works. Okay, so uh, first game is Grizzlies and Hornets. Memphis comes in as a five-point road dog, which is interesting. Kind of until you remember the Hornets are horrendous. It's a 216 Point five total, which is also quite ghastly. So starting on the Memphis side here, who you like him? I think you meant Memphis is favored, right? I see them favored. Yeah, no, I said they're favored. They're five-point favorites on the road. I think you said they were dogs, but we can move on from that. That's um, possible, but they are Memphis, so easy to get that confused. It is rare to see them as favorites. Um, yeah. Phenomenal spot for Jackson Jr., Jaron Jackson Jr., 8-1, um, too cheap. 39% usage with all these injured Grizzlies out. They do have more players tonight than they have in a while. Uh, they have Yuta Watanabe available. Lamar Stevens is here now. Just a collection of all-stars they got themselves at the trade deadline. Um, <laughs> I really think it's just Jaron Jackson and Vince Williams for me. Vince Williams, 6K flat, looks good. He's been at over a fantasy point per minute with Bain, Morant, Smart, and the rest of them out. Otherwise, the minutes are kind of divided pretty evenly, like, like, Gigi Jackson, Santi Aldama, I guess is okay, but point guards are probably split minutes. Conchar is Conchar. I think it's just Jackson and Williams, uh, Jaron Jackson and Vince Williams for me. Yeah, they both look really good. Vince Williams, his price never changes. He smashed last time out. Uh, so, yeah, he looks really good. Jaron Jackson with the 24% ownership. So, he is going to be owned, but he's still too cheap and projects too well. So, I'm with you. Only other guy I would mention would be Aldama just because he did play 37 minutes last time out. But good point. They are like really – they have a lot of bodies now. So they're, they're not so thin like they used to be. So I'm with you only looking at those two guys. On the other side, you got the Hornets. Miles Bridges leads the way with a 44-point projection. His He's had monster usage. I think he kind of failed last time out. But before that, he had two just epic outings with 40-plus real points in each game. Uh, so who do you like for the Hornets here? Same story with this team. They do have – New guys, Trey Mann, Grant Williams available. Um, Seth Curry, I guess. I don't know if he'll play, but he's available. So they're not as thin as they may as they were last night, for example. But even still, not a lot of interest. This team has a really low total. Bridges, 8 sevens getting up there, but he does still have a ceiling. Um, Richards and Miller have also gotten more expensive over the last 24 hours. So this looks like one of the worst teams on the slate, and I don't really see much need to... Uh, waste a bunch of time on them, honestly. Uh, nope, I agree. The only guy I really care about here is Miles Bridges just because that role is so massive, and he does have a 21% boom rating at DFS Hero. But, yeah, if he's going to carry ownership, there are guys that are a little bit above him or and below him in price that just feel a little bit better today. All right, moving on, we got the Bulls and Magic in Orlando. Seems like another ugly game yep. with a 18 total. Yeah, so the Magic are five-point home favorites. Um, it's not a great DFS environment, but we keep, you know, we get these guys, the Bulls guys again. Uh, wait, Kobe White is on the injury report. Let's just check real quick what his status is. He's probable. So they probably will be at full strength here. Just keep in mind, Patrick Williams is still out, and Zach Levine is obviously still out too. So it's Vooch, Damar, Kobe. Do you disagree, and are you prioritizing these guys in a not-so-great matchup? I think White is okay. There is a guy here on my radar, and it's Andre Drummond. Or 6-3. Um, came off the bench in the last game, but before that, we saw him start the game before that. Um, don't know why I said before that twice. Drummond has played over 30 minutes in back-to-back -back games. They have played him alongside Vucevic a lot, including in the fourth quarter of the last game. 
they apparently don't mind that anymore. They used to be exclusively one at a time on the court. If Drummond and Vucevic have overlap, there's a chance that Drummond's minutes are being underprojected. And he's not cheap, but I think he's like the epitome of a tournament play in a bad matchup on the road. Um, he's not going to be owned. And I think there's just a chance he's being underprojected. So I do plan on being uh, pretty easily over the field on Drummond tonight. This is very interesting because it feels like a very sharp play because the price is gross, the matchup is gross. But if if you're keeping, you know, if you're paying attention to like, like paying attention to this, like you are, yeah, thirty one plus minutes in two straight games. The Bulls have won both those games. He is absolutely smashing. He has, he has been super hyper efficient, but he kind of always is. He so always, he's like an elite per minute been, guy. Like if he's gonna get minutes, like yeah. that's all that really matters, you know. Yeah, this is kind of one of those things where, like, just keep doing it. If they're going to keep doing it, let's just ride it out. Because against Orlando in two meetings, he's only averaged 15 minutes, but he averaged 23 fantasy points in those games. So I'm with you. I don't think it feels great because he's probably not going to start. And no. He's 6'3". But, yeah, for tournaments, I mean, his projection looks good. He's got the second-best boom rating for the Bulls. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a pretty sneaky play. Uh, what about the guys up top? you have any interest in Vooch, Damar? You said you like Kobe a little bit. All their prices have ticked just up, and it is Orlando on the road. How do you yeah. feel about them? Not great. Um, like, you can compare the pay-up options for the Bulls to the pay-up options from the whole thing. Like Bridges and look, but they're not priorities. You can do the same with DeRoe and Vooch and uh, Kobe White. I do think White is the most interesting of the group, but... It's hard to really make any of them a priority. I think the slate is probably going to change a lot. Between now and lock, we have a lot of uncertainty. But either way, it's kind of hard to see getting to a ton of Chicago with a 106.5 total. Yeah, I agree. I think, they're, I think like usual, the Bulls are just fine. But I would downgrade them slightly more than we normally would just because on the road against a tough defensive team like Orlando isn't really a great spot. And the drumming call is very, very interesting. I don't think I'm going to be – targeting Drummond at will here, but he is going to be unowned and he does project well. So it's it's a, a fun little mention. On the other side, you have the Magic who don't look that much better just because the game total is kind of <laughs> gross and um, this is probably going to be a slow game. But this could be the other side of the game that you do want to you know lean towards if you do. So who do you like for the Magic? Really none. They're like the only team on the slate with zero injuries. So they have a deep rotation. Um, you know, Bancaro and Wagner are always fine. This slate has a lot of kind of pay up options that aren't going to be popular and they don't project great, but I wouldn't say they're overpriced. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. also for 5 4 is not overpriced, um, especially if Chicago runs like that too big lineup. The Magic will need some size. So I don't think Carter's a bad play. Um, I think Wagner is fine in tournaments too. Like it's, you can't prioritize them, but I do think these guys are okay enough to keep in your player pool. Yeah, I think uh, Van Caro looks really good. Uh, he's still only 8-3. He's got a nice 20% boom rating. The Bulls um, do not rebound very well, and they are ranking 29th against power forwards specifically. So I think he looks pretty good. Uh, he's not a priority yeah. on the slate right now. I'm a little surprised he's carrying 11% ownership, to be frank. But um, as far as guys who could end up being pretty low on, Van Caro does stand out a little bit. All right, moving to the next game, we have the Sixers and the Wizards. This could be a candidate for the game of the night. 239 and a half total, four and a half point spread. The Sixers are road favorites. Ty uh, Tyrese Maxey missed last night. He is in. Uh, Philly has a bunch of these guys who they just traded for. They they were all in yesterday. I believe they are, right? I know Cameron Payne was. Was Buddy Hield in too? They both played almost 40 minutes, yeah. Okay, so, yep. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, Philly's at full strength here uh, beyond not having Joel Embiid still. Let me just double check where they're at. No, they're without Melton, they're without Batum, they're without Cummington, and they're without Bamba as well. Yeah, I guess I was kind of meaning like uh, the team they've been recently without Embiid because Melton and Batum and has been they've been out for a while. Um, but you know, like Tobias, Ubre, Paul Reed, uh, and Maxi, those are the guys we've been looking at for the last week or so. Uh, but obviously, you have to factor in uh, Buddy Heald and campaign to some extent here. So starting on the Philly side of this game, who stands out for you? I think Maxi is very interesting at 9-2. Um, he's probable. I assume he'll play. The Wizards have been a team we're picking on all year. Uh, Maxi looks good. Harris, 
maybe 8k is a lot for him though like i think i like your bank hero call more in that range with maxi back um kind of nukes Ubre too he's overpriced anyway i think the bomba news is kind of big like he's been eating into paul reed's minutes on occasion now their backup center is kenneth lofton jr of memphis grizzlies fame mm -hmm. um Paul Reed for 5'9", like, I have a lot of interest there. Kenneth Lofton himself is 3'5". I think I'll let other people chase that. There's not a guarantee to get minutes anyway. And uh, Buddy Heald for 5K flat is just too cheap. Like, he started last night. He will start again tonight. I think Maxi will replace, uh, replace Payne in the lineup. So Buddy Heald for 5K is scoring dependent, and a scoring dependent guy as chalk is not always the most alluring thing in the world, but... They're playing the Wizards, which I think is the tiebreaker. So Buddy is going to be one of my highest owned players on the slate. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be everybody. He's projecting with 44% ownership. He does have a 36% boom rating. It's really tough to ignore the minutes and the price and the matchup. There's just so much good uh, looking at Buddy here. Um, if you want a reason to fade him, though, obviously the ownership is a very good reason. And also he's Buddy healed. So, I mean, he – okay, we yeah. have we do have to consider Maxi wasn't in last night, right? And they really needed Buddy to play those minutes and have that usage. So there is a pretty good argument that he's bad chalk. Um, yeah, I mean anyone that relies on shooting almost exclusively right. is sketchy. It's such a catch twenty two here because absolutely everything lines up for him to be a smash play, and yet he is so dicey. So but he's five k, you know, like if Buddy right. were six k and he was chalk, yeah, but he's five k, yeah. like. I think he's got the path, and the minute should be high enough to where I feel pretty safe with him, honestly. Right. Okay, so at 5K, he can get you 25 to 30 and not necessarily – he's not smashing. But that's, yeah. a, that's not going to sink you. But he also could get 50. Like, he is – Yeah, he could. No he doubt. has a good enough role where he is right now that he could smash. So I'm probably with you on eating, but I do think there is a little bit of logic to fade if you want to. I'm also with you. I'm not really into Tobias at this point with maxi back in and now they're at like full strength as far as like the new bodies that have come in there's just too many dudes there's too many guys competing for usage here uh and i will second the paul reed take i like paul reed a lot with uh mo bamba sideline on the other side we got the wizards cal kuzma leads the way per usual didn't jordan Poole smash in his last game like out of nowhere <laughs> yeah he did and on pride well, picks you had prize picks i had like under 16 and a half or something points and he's like Cruise literally rest. literally that very night you were like how did jordan Poole go from being like a prospect to being so like truly awful and we were talking about it and then that very night mm -hmm. he goes for 31 fancy points so he actually he can taper off a bit because at halftime he had like 30 fancy points didn't he against boston i know he was off to a hot start i just i didn't follow him like i wasn't playing him i don't think anyone played him so it's hard yeah. to say but yeah he did quite well i feel like he was like really on fire and then like flamed out apparently in the second <laughs> half, even though that game stayed close which yeah. is really annoying because it was a 17 point spread okay so anyways on the washington side there are still things to like here especially since it looks like a good game environment it looks like we're going to be looking at philly to a certain degree so you you always want to have some interest in the other side of this game so speaking to that are there any whiz that pop off for you there certainly is, and his name is Marvin Bagley the Third, because he's five five. He has not played the last couple games, but they traded uh, Daniel Gafford. They started Coos at center last night. Uh, they did not play Eugene Obi starting off. I think he played like twelve minutes. So. Yeah. Bagley off injury report. Presume he starts at five five. He should play thirty ish minutes in a good matchup against a Sixers team without Embiid. Uh, Bagley's a good per minute guy. He's just underpriced, and I think he looks phenomenal. The only issue is there's a lot of value on the slate all of a sudden with the Rockets and, like you said, Philly, a few other teams. So, you know, he's center only two, which is a bit limiting, but I love him. I think he's a great play. And Kuz for 7-5, I guess you could add to that mix as well. Um... Blal Kulubali started last night, played big minutes. With Bagley back, I'm not sure he'll start. He was kind of the replacement for Gafford last night. So kind of feels a little chasey, but he is cheap. Um, if he starts again, I think he's a great value. Yeah, speaking to the value point across the whole slate, I think it's just kind of like, you know, you, you have to trust you got to some degree, but also if you're not sure which way to go, trust the projections. Look at the projections and the ownership and – 
and you know let that kind of make the decision for you if it's really too close to call. But yeah, I agree. Uh, Kuz looks just fine, but Bagley looks really good at five and a half K as long as we're not worried that he's going to have any limitations suddenly. I wouldn't imagine Rashawn Holmes being there is going to make much of a difference. But by the way, Bagley, when he got his chance with the Wizards, was smashing. The only reason yeah. why he took off is because Gafford was there. So mm-hmm. Gafford's not there. The Wizards, for whatever reason, believe in Bagley. They wanted him here. He's not a bad player. Like, he's a bust oh, he's relative a to being his drafted ahead of Luka, but he's a fine player. Like, you know, he's not, it seemed like the Wizards need to take a shot like that. Yeah. The problem with Bagley has been he's not like the traditional modern era big. He's just yeah. he's more of a throwback and he's more of an offensive player. So um yeah, I, I like him a lot. 5.5k. And like I would definitely consider prioritizing him at more money over somebody like uh Jeff Green, who we're gonna talk about in just a second. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, but but a lot of people are gonna look at Jeff Green because you know there is merit to it, and we'll talk about it. So mm-hmm. um the ro- yeah. Sad but true. Rockets and Hawks. Uh, this could also be the game of the night. Wow. Here we go. I know. <laughs> Buckle up, baby. <laughs> Six and a half point spread. Rockets are dogs on the road against the Hawks. Rightfully so. They have no Shangoon. They have no Fred Van Fleet. They might be without Jabari Smith. They definitely don't have uh, Cam Whitmore. And they also may not have uh Tate. So they are undermanned either way. And they might be very undermanned if, the, if um, Tate and Jabari are out. Uh, so, yeah, starting with the Houston side here, obviously everybody looks good because there's going to be usage to go around, and it's a major pace-up game against a really bad uh, defensive team in Atlanta. Yeah. I, I would imagine you like everybody here. Why don't you point out the guys you really, really like and maybe even point out one or two that you don't want to play that you might be fading. Yeah. Amen Thompson did not do well last night, but he's going to start. Van Vliet's out again. He's 6K. He's just not expensive enough. He's a good per minute guy. They're playing the Hawks, like you said. It's an awesome matchup. I think he's a core play. Um, I think everyone should play him. I think not playing Amon Thompson is wrong on this slate. Um, it was wrong. It was wrong to not play him yesterday too. Don't we yeah. have to, Let's remember. Let's not be results based. He was a good play. He was a great play. Yeah, yeah. He was on a slate. Yeah, it's it was wrong to not play him last night and it didn't work out, but that's mm-hmm. the way it goes. Right. Um, yeah, Jabari Smith, if he plays, he's 5'6". He's dealing with illness, apparently. Um, but if he plays, it's Atlanta. It's a great spot. He is going to see more usage without Van Vliet and Shingun. Um, Phenomenal option. Um, so the projected lineup for this team is Jabari, Jeff Green, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, and Amin Thompson. Uh, we saw Jalen Green and Shingun get benched last night. Jalen Green was awful. <laughs> Jalen Green is occasionally awful. That will happen with him. They really don't have any choice but to play him tonight. Um, they're just lacking scoring. Like, Amon Thompson is good, but he's not a scorer. Jabari Smith is kind of a role player. A very good one, but a role player. Cam Whitmore's out. They need scoring. Um, Jalen Green can do that. He's 7-4. I think he looks outstanding. Um Aaron Holiday's 3-4. Again, minutes to go around here. He's already playing a role off the bench behind Amen Thompson. He's just really cheap. That's really the selling point on uh, Aaron Holiday. Jock Landale. If he starts, maybe. If he does not start, I will not play Jock Landale. Jeff Green, 3-1. I guess this is the big decision point. The tiebreaker is that he's 3-1 and against the Hawks. Um, and they're just missing bodies. Like, I can't imagine they played Jermaine Samuels a lot of minutes. They're not going to run Boban out there. I can't imagine for, you know, any real kind of run. Um, if they start Boban, then Boban is a play. But I guess Jeff Green is the big decision point. Like, are you playing Jeff Green? What do you think? I just remember, like, back in January when he played 38 minutes, he got 16 fantasy points. So here's the thing with Jeff Green. I, he's not a bad play because he's 3.1K and he's facing the Hawks. So if you play Jeff Green, you're not stupid. You're not a fish. But if you play chalky Jeff Green at that price, if he's like he, right now he's coming at 24% ownership. That's fine. I think it's going to be in single entries closer to like 60%. So oh. there's a lot of merit in fading Jeff Green and just making immediately a different lineup by just going with like Bagley and uh, Paul Reed or Bagley and – I don't just another cheap guy. A Kongu is like six four, so it just like 
just eliminating Jeff Green from your lineup so you don't have to deal with that mess. Um, if the minutes are there, he's probably going to get you 15 to 20 fantasy points just by being out on the floor. But he's had – just go look at his game log. I don't want to be a game log watcher, but the guy does not do much when he's out there. And it's not like he's going to have a ton of usage naturally because Jalen Green will shoot. Um, Jabari Smith will shoot. Aaron Holiday will shoot. Like they have guys that are going to be on the floor there that are going to shoot. So I don't want to get people off of him because he's a total punt and in a great spot, but I never feel good about Jeff Green. Uh, I'm with you on everybody else. I do think Jalen Green's the one guy I would get away from just because. Really? Yeah, well, he's 7'4". He's the, he's the most expensive one. I'm not saying he's a bad play by any means, but I'm just saying if you're going to pay up for guys and he's going to garner ownership, I'd go pay up a little bit more for somebody who's going to be unowned. Um, but I love Jabari Smith if he's in. I love, I'm playing Amon Thompson at 6K all day. I like Dylan Brooks at 4.9, Aaron Holiday 3.4. Uh, so all these guys look good. Everybody looks a little bit less good if Jabari and Tate are both in, uh, but they're still going to be all in play. I think I want Jabari in. Like, if they don't have Jabari, like, the spread is six and a half, you said. Like, I just feel like they're going to get murdered. But at the same time, they're going to have, like, nine or ten guys. So Yeah, I don't think it really matters. Play. I don't think it matters. Well, the Hawks aren't that good. And they're both on a back-to-back. -back, and but... they're also without Clint Capella. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. know. I I'm not want Jabari in. in. Like, Jabari out, I assume you were playing Jeff Green because they have no bigs except for Jock Landale and Boban. I know. I'm probably going to end up playing Jeff Green. I'm just saying it's important to think about these things both ways before you just like over go overweight and go get like 70, 80% Jeff Green just because he's 3.1K. Yeah, I'm not I as going that hard on Jeff Green. Well, I, I would not be shocked if people do just because. Yeah, yeah, it'll happen. If, if Jabari is out and Tate is out, why wouldn't he get a lot of minutes? The only reason he wouldn't Yeah, like if they're both out, I think you really don't have a choice. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, if Jabari is in, that would make me feel better about the fade, and then I'd hope people eat that chalk. Gosh dang, I'm going to play Jeff Green tonight. <laughs> I hate it so much. I really do. Anyways, I just like to look at hey, both sides. I want to say, like, Boban, Boban gets 12 minutes. Like, if the game blows out, whatever happens to get Boban 12 minutes, he is fully capable of putting up 20 to 25 DK points at 3K. Yeah. Well, here's what I want to know. Why not just give it to Boban today? Just let him just let him play. Why is Jeff Green better than Boban? He's not. He's not. <laughs> Jeff Green point. is a functional NBA player, I guess, still. And <laughs> Boban is a mascot, essentially. I love Boban, though. I've had some Boban Boban days before. He can up down low still. He can just go get rebounds and baskets. He will, like, like, yeah, he does, like, you know, Boban's like Andre Drummond, but he just doesn't play, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's a bit of a mess. I think if Jabari's in, it gets a little bit clearer. If he's out, I think you probably have to play Jeff Green, even though I hate it. All right, on the other side, we have the Hawks, who look very good just because this game environment, and if you're stacking all these Rockets, it does make sense to do a run back a little bit here. Not that you have to, but it, it does make some sense. Uh, starting up top with Trey, how interested are you in Atlanta? Quite interested. Um, they had nine guys last night. They had Murray out. Um, Wesley Matthews, Patty Mills also sat out. Patty Mills does not really matter, but I guess he might have if he played. DeAndre Hunter is also questionable tonight on the back-to-back. -back. He's been limited. Uh, seems like they're really slowly ramping him up, so I would say he's very much in doubt. Um, let's see. Trey Young, 9-5. Great price. Um, Houston's been good defensively, but they are shorthanded. They have not been good defensively, as good defensively of late as they were early in the year. Um, really love on Thompson as a matchup. Like, I do think it's kind of a tough spot for Trey Sneakley, but he kind of has a high floor because he has so much usage, high assist rate. He's a great play. Um, not really projecting for a lot of ownership either. Uh, DeJounte for 7-6, I, I think looks fine, assuming he's not limited. He's been out with a back injury. Jalen Johnson looks fine. Uh, Kongwu for 6-4, I think is reasonable. He's been playing a lot. 34 more minutes in the last four games. Bogdanovich, it seems like, is better off the bench. I don't know if 
DeJounte being out makes Bogdanovich a better play. It seems like Bogdanovich thrives more kind of as a high usage bench role bench player. So six two for him. I don't know. I feel like we've been chasing Bogdanovich for the last several slates and it just doesn't work out. And it makes me think it's like a Nimhard yeah. Halliburton situation where the guy's just better if you know other people are out if he's in a normal role. So you know, there are some moving parts here. This team has a lot of Q tags. But as of now, I think Trey Young is the obvious priority, and I think Kongu is fine. Uh, yeah, hundred well, uh, uh, percent. I think B- Boggy is finally getting expensive enough to where I don't feel like I need to force him in. He's totally fine, Sadiq Bay, totally fine. Uh, but um, I don't think they, I don't think we need to force it, especially on the slate with so much value. Uh, that's not, that's not really where I'm going to be living. But if I had to live in that range, I would definitely go with Kongu at six four over Boggy at this point. All right, moving on to the Pacers and the Knicks. And by the way, I'm, I, I don't know if I said it, but I'm w- with you 100% on Trey Young. He's probably the only guy I'm really loving on that side uh, and with uh, Okongwu as a distant second. The, uh, next game, we got Pacers and Knicks with a five-and-a-half-point spread. Indy is on the road and favored with a 234-and-a-half total. I'm wondering if that spread with the Pacers favored <laughs> is telling us that Brunson is out or just that the Knicks are so beat up or that maybe – the new guys they got they traded for won't be ready yet. This is a mess until we find out Brunson's status and whether or not these uh, you know Bojan Bogdanovic and um, Alec Burks whether or not they're playing. Let's by the way, um, because what's his name Hartenstein is out. So uh, obviously Julius Randle is still out. OG is still out, uh, and Brunson is questionable. So if Brunson is out. Um, that opens things up and keeps it keeps it nice. But if those guys come in, uh, Bojan and Alec Burks are. Can we safely rely on these dudes that have been pushing forty minutes every night? I don't know if we can. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. let's see what you think about New York um, as things stand. Yeah, it's a great matchup against uh, Indiana, of course. But like you said. I think Bogdanovich and Burks are confirmed in. I don't see any reason they'd be out since it's been two days since that trade. Right. So, assuming they play, I think Bogdanovich is... Like, I don't know how you can play the new guys. Like, Burks is not that cheap. Bogdanovich, 6'5". Wow. Uncertainty with his role. Uh, DiVincenzo, over 8K. Hart, over 7K. That's pretty rough. I think the most interesting guy among the kind of secondary Knicks is Precious. Yeah. Because there's no Hartenstein, there's no Randall, there's no Robinson. Jericho Sims might be out. He's questionable as well. Yeah, this um, new this was, impact, and now this impacts him. Right, he has a path of 40 minutes. Yeah, as things stand now, without with Sims projected in. Right. If Sims sits, Precious could play 40 plus easily again. Mm-hmm. He's not cheap. He's six nine, and he's a chua. Like he doesn't get a lot of usage, but Indiana is a great spot. They do allow the most points in the paint per game. Um, and Precious could be playing center here with no Hartenstein. So I do think it's a fantastic spot for him. Watch Tibbs just ride Taj Gibson. <laughs> Dude, he's played Taj Gibson multiple times, and both times that I've watched, he's had to sub him out of the game because he's too winded after playing like five <laughs> minutes. Oh, good old Taj and those little 10-foot jumpers. All um, those years of playing 40 minutes a game under uh, Tibbs are finally catching up to him. Oh, new, breaking. They take a toll on your yeah. aging things. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. We have no idea what the impact is going to be for Bogdanovich and Burks. I don't think either, either of them are playable in their first game here. Um, and even but, if even if Brunson is out, I don't know how safe the other dudes are with these two new bodies. Brian, like I think McBride would start, but Burks is there to steal potential minutes. Like I don't think they'd be afraid to run Burks at the point, essentially. No. Um, no. Just because of lack, I do think McBride would be playable uh, in that scenario. I also think Brunson is pretty interesting, like as an alternative to Trey Young, as one of these kind of pay up cards because, you know, he's only missed one game. I know it's an ankle injury, but it's Tibbs also. So I still think Brunson would see 40 minutes. <laughs> so I'm happy to go there if he's going to be under owned uh, if he plays. So I do think Achu is the best play of the bunch, though, like I said. I agree 100%. I don't have anything really fresh to add there. Good points. Okay, on the other side of that game are the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton still limited, uh, forever questionable, 
and Jalen Smith is questionable for this game. Let's see if anybody else is on. Nope, I think that is it. Oh, their new new guy, Doug McDermott, who probably won't play. He's questionable. Um, all right, so who are you looking for the Pacers? I think McDermott will play like they traded Buddy. I don't think he's going to have some huge role, you know. No, like he's not viable or anything, but oh. I think he'll be, you know, he'll play. Indiana just plays too many guys. Right. So, like, I think Miles Turner is okay for 6K flat, but his minutes are really all over the place. Um, it is a good spot, though, the Knicks without any room protection, no Hartenstein, et cetera. So, I do have interest in Turner as a tournament play. I think he's a really good um, kind of mid-range center option. Otherwise, nothing. Like Halliburton limited, like you said. McConnell off the bench. Not really needed on this slate with all this other value. So Indiana looks like one of the worst teams on the slate. Yeah, nobody just – just nobody stands out. Projection-wise, nobody looks great. So if Halliburton were randomly ruled out or something, sure. Stuff opens up. You, you can look at McConnell. Siakam would pop. But as things stand, nope. Fading Pacers. All right, on to the Cavs and Raptors in Toronto. The Raptors – are nine point home dogs with a 230 total on the Cleveland side. Nothing to report for injuries. Looks like they are at full strength unless something pops up. I would not anticipate that being the case. So it's not really a bad matchup. Um, and Spider always looks good. Is there anybody else for Cleveland that you like? It's a great matchup. Um, the Raptors have the third worst defensive rating since uh, January 1st. So they are terrible. Um, Mitchell looks outstanding, like we said, like you said. Uh, Jared Allen's fine, but his ceiling is lower with Mobley in. He hasn't been quite as dynamic of late. His price is coming down, but I think there are other options at center that are uh, worth prioritizing over him. Mobley, Garland Limited, yeah. Um, it's really just Mitchell, I think, for, for the Cavs. Yeah, and he uh, looks increasingly more appealing if that ownership is going to flock to Tyrese Maxey, to Brunson, to Trey Young. I think Trey Young is going to be the chalkiest guy there. We'll look at that before we end here today. But uh, yeah, if Donovan Mitchell he's coming at thirteen percent ownership, if he if that dips down to we're looking at sub ten percent ownership, he's looking very very interesting as one of the best does on the slate. On the other side, the Raptors do not have a good matchup, and they kind of just eat into each other in general. I think RJ Barrett is questionable, so that actually could open up some value and make some of these guys look a little bit better. Uh, does that injury news impact how you feel about, feel about the Raptors tonight? Um, I guess it would make Bruce Brown the starter, but they do have Olenek and Abaji, Abaji in there today. So not really. I think this team looks even worse than Indiana. Like it's a brutal matchup. They're at home as huge underdogs, relatively huge underdogs. Nine points is a lot. Um. You know, Pirtle and Quickly are priced up. Barnes, I guess Barnes would look a little better without Barrett. I think there'd be more usage, usage for him to go around. So I do have interest in Barnes if Barrett is out. Otherwise, this team is likely a full fade. Yeah, I was going to say, if Barrett is out, Barnes is going to be scoring more. He's going to have the ball in his hands more. So at 8.5K and unowned, that's an interesting turning play for sure. So I agree with yeah. that. All right, last game of the night, we have the Suns against the Warriors. Uh, the Suns are two point road favorites. This is a very nice 242 and a half total. Obviously, the game is projected to be close for the Phoenix side. The only news to report is Bradley Beal is, I think it's probable, so he's probably going to play. He went off in his last game with Devin Booker out. Devin Booker is back. Um, so yeah, this team's at full strength against the Dubs. Really good game environment. Uh, who do you like here? I think it's fine, even with uh, Booker back. Severy's not egregious for him i feel like i want to like this game and it's going to be close and high scoring it's just kind of hard to get to any of them because i think everyone's pretty efficiently priced uh like i said beal's fine nurkic kind of as a tournament center maybe uh golden state is small with draymond starting at center i don't think that's a bad dart throw um kd and booker up in the 10k range like we always say with the suns like all these guys are viable as pay up to be contrarian type plays no one's going to be on them. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. It's just it, you can't make them priorities on this slate, I don't think. But I do have interest in the main guys for sure. I don't really necessarily agree that you can't make them priorities because the, so much ownership could be flocking to certain guys up top. If so, if everybody's going to be on Trey Young as a run back from the Chalky Rockets, Devin Booker at 9-7, completely unowned, looks pretty appealing to smash the slate. I know uh, closing fallacy as you say to me when I play guys in the late game. But it's a great spot. 
242 total, close spread. Devin Booker in three games this year averages 52 fantasy points per game against the Dubs. So he loves this matchup. Uh, and by the way, they are 30th dead last against shooting guards on the year. Um, so, he, you know, he's not going to get any ownership. If anybody does play people from this game, they're probably going mid-range with Beal or they're paying up for KD because it's just a safer play. Uh, so I really like Devin Booker specifically, and KD is totally fine. I agree that they're not priority plays in the sense that they don't stand out as obviously as some of the guys we've discussed, but that's precisely why I like Devin for uh, tournaments. Uh, I don't really like anybody else in that game, though, for except for KD. Um, on the dub side, to close things out, obviously Steph Curry leads the way up top. And uh, nobody's really popping for the boom rating, the DF, DFS hero system here. But is there anybody that you like? I think Draymond at 6K flat's pretty good. Um, starting at center, Phoenix is an imposing matchup for bigs. So I think Draymond looks a little bit underpriced to me. He's not really pulling much ownership either. So I think he's a good play. Kaminga is getting up there. 7 4 is a lot for him. He's been fantastic. Um, he's just been insanely efficient. Like he shoots incredible percentages, like well over 50% over the last couple of weeks, which seems nuts, but he's been doing it for long enough to where I guess I trust it by now, starting uh, at the four next to Draymond. He looks pretty good in tournaments. Um, Curry's too expensive, I think. Wiggins, shaky minutes. Clay Thompson, shaky minutes. Pajemski, a little overpriced. Um, Gui Santos is a person projecting for minutes. I don't know who that is. So Draymond Green and Jonathan Kaminga, I think, are the standouts. Um, everyone else, I'm not really into. Yeah, Draymond is just fine for me. I like Kaminga, but the price is ticking up, so I don't think I'm going to really get to him. His projection doesn't really blow me away. But it's worth noting the, the game environment, and he is not going to be owned. Uh, with Steph, I agree, way too expensive. He had 42 real points in his last game and only 54 fantasy points. So, um, yeah, the the uh, other stats are just not there, really, on a regular basis. Also worth noting, in three games against the Suns, only only 36 fantasy points per game. Ooh. Like, Curry's below, like, Trey Young, Mitchell, Devin yeah. Booker. He's like, there are so many good player. guards to pay up for. I don't see right. the path this, to a 9-8. Playing Curry, playing Curry feels like closing fallacy. If you're playing Curry, like, where's the reasoning? If there isn't any, I don't think. Outside yeah. of, hey, I want to play a guy who can get 60 and nobody's going to own him. That's it. That's your only reason for playing Curry. I'd rather just play Devin. I think he's a better play. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll do it for us. Uh, looks like a really good inviting slate that could also turn into a hot mess right away. Uh, you do want to keep an eye on the Houston stuff, uh, but I do imagine you're going to want a few Rockets in your lineup tonight. That would be the starting point. Uh, real quick before we go, who's the one guy you are building your lineup around tonight? Um I'm um, in Thompson, baby. Yeah, Thompson, there he is. Flat. Leading the way with the 39% boom rating, leading the way as the chalkiest player on the board. But as we say, that is good chalk. And I, I think I'm with you on Buddy Heal being good chalk too. Yeah, eat some of that chalk, make one or two big moves like Devin Booker to close the slate, uh, and then you could be uh, finished the night at the top. All right, thanks for checking us out. If we uh, help you out anyway, please like the video, subscribe to our channel. And also check out the DFS Hero uh, lineup optimizer. Get 15% off now. Try it. All right. Good luck. And we'll see you next time.